welcome to season four, episode two of An Hour with Jesus. How great is our God. Sing with me how great. the Lord. Thank you for tuning in and joining us on this second episode of season four of An Hour with Jesus. Those of you that are just finding us, and it seems like every week we have new people finding us, hit the subscribe button and you'll always know, and that little bell with the subscribe button, you'll always know when we're coming online. Um, changes this, this season the replay now will be featured on Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time. We've been doing it on Friday afternoon for all these months, but we're moving that to Saturday morning to better accommodate uh, just the whole timing of things. Um, so if you'd like to tune back in and chat with your friends on the window there, we will be live this Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern, and whatever time zone you're in, just do the math. If you don't know what time that is, 
Just Google it. Say, what time is it in Dallas, Texas? And it will tell you. And that way you'll know when to tune in. Praise the Lord. Hey, it's a new season. And if you're with us every week, would you consider becoming a partner of New Glory International? Do you know the reason that I can continue to do this every week is because people around the world are partners with us and support us every month with whatever size gift the Holy Spirit would put in your heart to share. And we have some people that give $5 a week, and we have some that give much, much larger sums. Uh, it's what God speaks to you and how the program is ministering to you. Uh, we don't ask for your tithe. That belongs in a local church. There are people, I, I think, that do tithe to us because they're not tied into a local church at this time in their lives, and so they they make New Glory a tithe or a portion of their tithe, and that is fine, too. If you just want to give a one-time gift or a once-in-a-while gift, you can do that, too. Everything can be done at our website, which is newglory.org. But I haven't mentioned anything about partners. We call them glory partners because they stand with us in taking the presence of the Lord around the world. In November, Liz and I are going to be down in South Africa for a three-week tour. And uh, those folks are looking forward to us coming down there and bringing the gift of his presence with us. Well, your gifts help us do that because we pay our own way when we go out to other nations. It's too expensive in their economy to fly us down. So New Glory picks up that, that tab. And so... Uh, when we go down to South Africa, I don't think we'll probably even make enough to pay for the airline tickets. But you know what? It is a work unto the Lord. And it is a joy to go down there and minister probably seven to nine, seven to ten times. We'll do concerts in different places. Um, so pray for that tour. We'll be leaving here first week of November, coming back just before Thanksgiving here in America. And in any way, I want to just mention that to you, and, and, and if God touches your heart, if he doesn't, and you can't afford to help us out, that's okay, too. Um, this comes to you free of charge. Hey, a lot of you watched Sing Over America online uh, in the last week, and that was a totally free thing. Let me tell you something. That costs money. Everything we do over there costs money. And those who came in, in attendance paid a ticket price to help us defer the cost of the building. But if you were blessed by the live stream, send a gift to Sing Over America. That's an entirely different thing than New Glory International. Sing Over America is its own nonprofit organization, and we count on the gifts of God's people to allow us to continue to do Sing Over America in two more years. 2024 will be our next one. And so if, if that's been a blessing to you, consider donating to that. We would so appreciate it, and God will bless you for it. Amen. All right, I think that's about all the announcements. Uh, I am going to be in Amarillo, Texas, the first part of October. Check our website, newglory.org, for that. If you're anywhere around Amarillo and want to come be a part of a worship conference there with my friend Damon Stewart. All right, shall we... Get into the evening a little bit. I think we shall. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. I take it a privilege and an honor to be with you every Wednesday night. God bless you.
strength, our refuge, our shield. Oh, he's a shield about us, the glory and the lifter of our head. Hallelujah. Mm. Always good to start a service with that song. You say, well, this isn't a service. Well, it kind of is to me. I've treated this like a, a live concert since we began this in week one of March of 2020. Wow, that's been a long time now. But that's how I treat it. That's how I respect and honor you, the attenders, and uh, just enjoy doing that. Um, try to keep it real and low-key, but... Um, it's a worship concert to me. I hope it is to you, too. Well, I started writing a song. Wow. I don't know. 30 years ago? 25, anyway. And I never would get to the point where I finished the song. And a couple weeks ago, that melody came back to me again. So I just decided to noodle around with it and, and complete it. And so <laughs> I finally did. I don't even know where that scripture is. Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and thy outstretched hand. Nothing is too difficult for you. Well, that is the theme of this song. Just uh, a, a little chorus, doesn't have a verse to it or a bridge, you know, the, the T-Mac way of writing a lot of songs. But there's, uh, well, there's four different verses, if you will. So instead of a chorus, it, it just four different uh, expressions. So I'm going to sing it tonight, and um, I've never even gone through the whole song yet, so I'm going <laughs> to scoot this over. Hopefully we'll get through it. We'll see how it goes. It's a fun little thing. Bye. 
it. Try it with me. for all these things. See, the, the chord structure of that is just one that has been used a million times over the years. Um, and so I just borrowed it because it's just so easy to sing with that, that chord structure. You know, we get a little too religious with certain melodies we think of the old hymns as being so holy and they are 
They're beautiful, beautiful expressions of the Godhead to heaven from the earth. But do you know, and I might have shared this before, that many of the old hymns that we cherish as religious relics and sacred holy items were actually the melodies came from bar rooms and pubs back in England. And the authors, the evangelists, wanted to reach those in the bar room so they would take familiar melodies and put God's words to them. And so that kind of unholifies some of the <laughs> some of these songs. So I can take a song like that. Um, it reminds me. I've got another melody here. While we're on this subject, and I wasn't going to go to this at this point tonight, but um, God can use anything. So you can take secular melodies and make items of worship, articles of worship unto the king with them. It just, just commit them unto the Lord. Um, if you're familiar with the group David Gates uh, and Bread, David Yates, David Gates and Bread, David Gates and Bread, a uh, popular group back in the 70s especially, and they sang a song that just had one of those melodies that I just loved called Lost Without Your Love. And, um, well, just last week, I just put a few different words to it. You may recognize it if you were into secular music at all. It's a beautiful love song. The, the, the original song talks about him losing his love, that they had such a great love, and the, and the girl left him. And he's hoping that she'll come back again. But uh, that aside, uh, instead of lost without your love, life without you isn't worth the trouble of. I sang this. And I'm lost without your touch. Life without you isn't worth very much. I'm as helpless as a ship without a wheel Your presence I can't feel And nothing seems as real So keep your touch on me So I can help your bride be free Can I just sing it one more time? I'm lost without your touch Life without you doesn't matter very much I'm as helpless as a ship without a wheel Cause your presence I can't feel And nothing seems as real So keep your touch on me So I can help your bride be free Amen. I remember Catherine Kuhlman's, one of her strongest prayers was, Oh, Lord, never remove your anointing from my life. Because she realized every good thing that came out of her was because of the anointing. You see, without the touch of God on this head, you receive nothing but music for an hour. And it won't change your life. It's the anointing. It's the touch of God that changes my music and changes people's lives. Same thing for a man who preaches a sermon. It's the touch. It's the anointing on the sermon that brings life out of the scriptures. That's why I said, so keep your touch on me so I can continue to help your bride be free 
For me, that is through worship and the worship experience. I just love that melody. It's so easy for me to, to worship with beautiful melodies, which is something that is so lost in a great majority of today's contemporary music. You have heard me say it before. There are so many gorgeous melodies out there to be written to beautifully give worship to the king. And I just think we're missing it to a great degree. I won't preach on that anymore tonight. Blessed 
of times one thing hasn't changed there's no one like you the more I seek you
It's overwhelming. Wow. Just a sweet, sweet peace here right now. I almost hate to disturb the peace. I don't know what Holy Spirit's doing right where you are. Thank you, Lord.
Praise your name, precious Lord. Let the people of the earth sing hallelujah. Every nation, tribe, and tongue with that universal word of hallelujah. Hmm. <laughs> Just got to sing the um, exalted song that we taught last week, Nathaniel's song. I will shorten it a bit. Your name is exalted in the heavens. Exalted.
just sing that with me one more time. Oh, Lord, your kingdom reigns forever. Your kingdom has no end. say amen to that tonight <laughs> his kingdom I like what Nathaniel wrote instead of his kingdom will have no end and of his kingdom there shall be no end it already has no end that's going on right now his kingdom is established from everlasting to everlasting it's forever amen I like that praise the good Lord Jeremiah 29, for I know the plans and thoughts from the Amplified Version that I have for you, you, you. <laughs> I know the plans, the Lord said, and the thoughts I have for you. Friends, I want to know what God has next. I know he's got a next for me and for you. And I want to know, Lord, what is next? What do you want me to put my hand to? He renewed that thought in my heart during our Sing Over America worship event. What do you want? Here's one thing I know, that his thoughts and his plans for me and for you are good. They are plans for peace. The Lord has plans for peace for you and well-being and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope then you will call on me, and you will come and pray to me, and I will hear your voice, and I will listen to you. Then with a deep longing you will seek me and require me as a vital necessity, and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you says the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and I will free you and gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I'll bring you back to the place from where I sent you into exile. You might feel like you've been in exile. I don't know where you are right now in your walk. But what did we sing earlier? The more that I seek you, the more I find you. The more I find you, the more I love you. He said it just right there in Jeremiah 29. You will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. Not a half-hearted, well, let's see if there's anything with going on with God. No, when you just throw everything into it. I introduced my son and friend, Nathaniel Bassey, as a man who eats, sleeps, drinks, breathes, worship. You know what? We went out to dinner after the thing was over. You know what he did the whole time we were there? Talked about it. Talked about God. Talked about worship. Talked about bringing the people into a higher place of worship. And that's what God is looking for. And when we sell out like that, and the, his call is always wide open to do that to come to him and make him first place. And everything else under that is not nearly as important as that first place. But everything else will fall into place when we search for him and seek him with all of our hearts, 
will be, he'll be found of us. We will find him. And we will hear his voice on what to do next. Just do what he says to you. Just take the next step. And that's kind of the prayer that I'm praying right now when I take my, my power walks in the mornings. Lord, just show me what's next. Tell, show me where to step next. What do you want? Maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's to stand right in place for a while. I don't know. But I know one thing. His plans are good. His thoughts are great for you. He doesn't remember anything from your past because he's God and he has the ability to block out and slam the door on every single thing in your past. And I don't know about you, but I rejoice all the time in that. I love a clean slate before God, and it's only because of the blood of Jesus that washes away our sin that the Father can look at us as righteous creatures before him. Righteous before his eyes because he sees us through the precious, perfect, shed blood of his son. So take courage today. God has a great, great plan for your life. He knows the plans he has for you. And he's already putting those in place. I don't care if you're nine years old or you're 99 years old. There is a plan for your life. Some of you, it might be intercessory prayer. Some of you, it might be evangelism. Some of you, it might be teaching a Sunday school class. Some of you, it might be working for a ministry. Some of you, it might be working in a secular place where it's awful so that you can bring one person or a hundred to know Jesus. I don't know what it is, but it's a good plan. He's a good God, and he loves you with an everlasting love. Haven't we felt him in this meeting tonight? I hope you have. I felt the Holy Spirit just sitting right here, just right next to me, just whispering in my ear so softly. He's such a gentleman. (laughs) Give praise to your king tonight as you lay your head down. Give worship to the Lord God Almighty. And may the rest of your week, whenever you're watching this, may the rest of your week be marked with his peace and his joy, and his hope. Those are great things. And his love. It's been a joy being with you tonight. Thank you for joining us. Remember to go to the website and um, check out our products. You can become a glory partner there. Send a donation there. Subscribe right there on YouTube where you are right now and hit that little bell button and we'll always let you know when we're coming online. Praise God, it's been a joy to be with you. And until we meet you again, either here or there or in the air, (laughs) bye-bye for now.